glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And what a thrill it is to be here today with you. How many of you know that this building is not the house of the Lord? You are. Praise the Lord. What an opportunity to be here. Well, I love to tell the story. Many of you are probably familiar with that old hymn that says, I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus of the, and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else will do. Then I love the refrain. It says, I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell that old, old story of Jesus and His love. We're all going to be telling that old, old story of Jesus and His love for all of eternity. That's what we're going to be doing. And I'm here this morning to share with you how your congregation can partner with the Gideons International as we share that old, old story of Jesus and His love around the world. Well, what difference can I make? That's a question that I sometimes have to ask when I think of numbers like 91 million. That's the number of scriptures distributed by the Gideons International last year. Or when I think of numbers like 2 billion, that's the number of scriptures distributed by the Gideons since 1908. The Gideons International is an association of born-again business and professional men and their wives. And since 1899, our purpose has been sharing the gospel around the world. Today, we're organized in 200 countries, and we publish scriptures in over 100 languages. We place Bibles in designated traffic lanes of life, places like hotels and motels, hospitals, convalescent homes, we also distribute New Testaments to students in schools and colleges, to prisoners and police, and uh, fire and medical personnel, as well as men and women of the armed services. And as members of local churches, we visit congregations like yours to let you know what we're doing with what you're doing through the Gideons International. We're members of the local church, sent by the local church, to share the gospel in places that the local church can't go. Then, we refer these new believers back to the local church. In the little New Testaments that we distribute to our students and around the world, there's so many different ones, there's a statement in the back of it, you'll see it there, it says, after making your decision to receive Christ, we encourage you to prayerfully seek a local church, church congregation, or assembly that will assist you in growing as a new Christian by the clear teaching of the Bible. So we refer them back to the local church. And the promise of Isaiah 55 11 is fulfilled as men and women and boys and girls around the world come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ by reading a Bible or scripture placed by a Gideon. Well, the most important thing that I can ask for this morning is your prayer. <coughs> Our number one need is prayer, and we can do nothing without prayer, without God going before us. Right. It was just a few years ago, and I was uh, doing sharing a Gideon report at a church in West Siloam Springs, and my prayer partner had gone with me, and he sang the song, My God is Real, before I got up to share. Well, I got up on the platform, and I got ready to start, and I noticed this young man came in, and he sat down on the back row. And he was probably in his mid-30s, and he was a, a stocky young man and had a tank top and a pair of shorts on, and his head was shaved. And, and so he'd come in a little late, and I noticed him. So I got ready to do my report, and I got to the point where I told the congregation, our number one need is prayer. And when I said that, this young man stood up on the back row, and he hollers out, what good's it going to do? God's not real anyway. If God's real, where is He? Wow, I didn't know what to do. That's the first time that ever happened to me. I knew that if I, if I confronted the young man, it could lead to a conflict. Well, I knew he was asking a question. I looked over at the pastor that was sitting on the platform here to my left, 
and he just crossed his arms and looked the other way as if to say, this is your problem. <laughs> Before I could even think about what to say, the Lord had put words in my mouth and I said, you know, my God is so real. I said, I'm everything I am today because of Him. Without Him, I would be nothing. And you ask, where is He? I said, He lives here in my heart. I said, but His presence fills this entire room. And He desires to live in the heart of every person in this room. The young man sat down, and I was relieved. <laughs> I finished my report, and I was standing down here at the front, and the pastor got up to offer an invitation at the end of the service. And I'm standing there asking myself, what could I have said or what could I have done that would have convinced this young man that my God is real? And immediately, I came under conviction. And the Lord says, there's not anything you can say, there's not anything you can do to convince him that I am real. It's I that draws them to my son. You just need to pray. And I began to pray. And as I began to pray, this young man stood up at the back row, walked down to the front with tears in his eyes, knelt at the altar, and gave his life to Jesus Christ. It's prayer that makes the difference. I'm also here this morning to ask you to give to the kingdom of God through the Gideon's International. Even though we're distributing and placing more than two scriptures every second, every time your heart beats, the need is even greater and we need your help. And so if God has placed it on your heart this morning, I would ask you to consider a financial gift. Every scripture we distribute and every salvation testimony is the result of the generosity of somebody just like you. You should have had one of these little uh, pamphlets on your seat when you came in today. There is uh, more information about the Gideons in it. There's also a credit card slip in there if you want to use it. And so we encourage you to use these. New Testaments cost just an average of just $1.25. And so $125 will buy a case of scriptures of New Testaments and place them anywhere in the world. Gideon Hotel Bibles cost just $5. And over the course of its life of about six years in a hotel room, it has the potential to reach approximately 2,300 people. You can also help purchase scriptures throughout the year by using the Gideon cards. You have a display in your lobby back here. And each time you use one of these cards, Bibles are placed in memory of somebody. And so that's another way to support the Gideons. Well, a few minutes ago, I asked a question, what difference can I make? Well, let's watch the video and see what difference one New Testament supplied by someone just like you and your congregation is making. I got involved in drugs while I was in dental school thinking that I could do both, be a graduate student by day and doing drugs and partying. Well, this whole time my parents, they had been a Christian for several years now and just had really grown in their faith. My parents knew the only way they would be able to see me since I wanted nothing to do with them. They actually flew down to Atlanta one time and after the second day I kicked them out. But my dad, he wanted to give me something and it was his very first Bible and he left it on my kitchen counter. But as soon as they left, I took his Bible and I threw it in the trash can. My mom prayed that God would do whatever it takes to bring this prodigal son to the Father. Well, this miracle, this answer to prayer came one day with a bang on my door. I opened up my door and on my front doorstep were 12 Federal Drug Enforcement agents, Atlanta police, and two big German Shepherd dogs. I just received a large shipment of drugs and they confiscated all my money and my drugs and I was charged with a street value equivalent of 9.1 tons of marijuana. I was walking around the cell block and I passed by this garbage can and as I looked at that garbage can, I felt like I was looking at my own life. And I was about to pass by that garbage can, but something on top of the trash caught my eye. I bent over and I picked it up and it was a Gideon's New Testament. I took that New Testament back to my cell and for the very first time I opened up 
that New Testament and I read through the entire Gospel of Mark. And as I know today, what we have in our Bibles is not just ink on paper, but what we have in our Bibles is the very breath of God. And it's living and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. And as I began to read God's Word, it began to penetrate me and it began to cut through my stubborn, hard heart. He revealed His plan for my life and He called me full-time ministry while I was in prison. So the greatest miracle of this whole story is that actually Moody accepted me. I was released from prison in July of 2001 and I started the very next month. I'm teaching now back at Moody in the Bible department. So I tell people I went from prisoner to professor. Only God can do that. On behalf of Christopher Ewan, I want to say thank you this morning for supporting the Gideons International. Britt and I had an opportunity to meet him at the Oklahoma State Convention where he shared and what a wonderful man he is. And what we found out is that a young man we had been supporting in college at Moody Bible College was currently under taking a class with Christopher Ewan. So uh, we say thank you for that. But what difference can I make? Maybe you need to ask some of the men who placed their name in the back of this little Spanish New Testament. When you open the back of it, you'll see page after page of names of men whose lives were changed for all of eternity. When you open the front of it, there are name after name of men whose lives were changed for eternity. All by reading this one copy of God's Word. It was replaced with a new New Testament in a jail cell in Honduras. And so on behalf of these men in that jail cell whose lives were changed for eternity, congregation, I want to say thank you this morning. And what is so special about this little New Testament? It reminds me, it could have been placed here by any one of you in this congregation today. That's what difference the placing of one New Testament can make. What difference can I make? Brenda and I just recently were at the uh, International Convention in Indianapolis. We were having lunch one day and our waiter, his name was Darren Ford, uh, was there and we had a chance to visit with him. I had a chance to ask him, I said, Darren, in your personal opinion, what does it take to get to heaven? And Darren said, well, it's, it's being a good person and, and doing good things. But Brenda and I had a chance to share with him and tell him that that's good, that that's not enough to get you into heaven. We shared with him the plan of salvation out of that little New Testament. There in the restaurant, we prayed with Darren and he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Congregation, thank you. What difference can I make? In 2014, I had the opportunity to go to Ghana. We were, it was our last day in Ghana. We had distributed scriptures. I had an opportunity to see over 10,000 students receive Christ while we were there in the classrooms as we distributed copies of God's Word. But on the last day, we were going to a military base, and so we asked them if we could distribute scriptures to the, the officers and to the students. They said, well, you need to go see the vice commander of this base, Commander K.D. Hagan. We walked into his office, we told him we were there with the Gideons, and he got all excited and was so thrilled that he pulled out a little white New Testament out of his uniform pocket. He said, I love the Gideons. He said, I have carried this New Testament since 2003. I attribute it and God to saving my life many times while I've been in battle. He went on to share other experiences about it. It was about worn out. As we were getting ready to leave, one of the men that was with our group heard from the Lord, said, Commander Hagen, said, may I see that New Testament again? He pulled it out. He handed it to this man that was with our group. As Gideon opened it up, he looked at it and he said, Commander Hagen, as I look at this New Testament, I can see that it's about worn out and you have carried it for years. But when I open it up and I look inside it, I can see that you have never read it. 
He said, I'm here today to tell you that one day you will die. And when you do, you will either go up or you will go down, you'll go to heaven, or you'll go to hell. And I'm here today to tell you that carrying a New Testament in your shirt pocket is not enough to get you into heaven. And praise the Lord, we had the opportunity to pray with Commander Hagen. And there in his office, he gave his life to Jesus Christ and signed the back of that old New Testament that he had carried in his pocket since 2003. On behalf of Commander Hagen, I want to say thank you what difference can I make? Go with me, if you will, to the British Isles. There was a young businessman and he checked into a hotel and uh, there was a Bible laying on the nightstand, a Bible very similar to the one that I have in my hand. And in the back of these Bibles, there are some blank pages. So this young man picked up this Bible. He starts looking at it. He comes through it. He sees that there is writing on the pages in the back of that Bible. And he proceeds to read it. And as he reads, he reads about a man that had checked into this same hotel room, this same Bible, and had written in the back of it that he checked in that hotel because his life was falling apart, and he checked in with the intent of taking his own life in that hotel room at that time. But he picked up this Bible, this man had picked up the Bible, read the Scripture, and read how there was hope and how God could make a difference in his life and, and gave his life to Christ. As he reads to the bottom of that page of the writing, he sees his father's name and realizes it was his father that had written in the back of that Bible. But you see, there's more to that story because this young man had checked into this hotel that night with the intent of taking his own life. On behalf of this father and this son, I want to say thank you, thank you for your support of the Gideons of placing these scriptures around the world. What difference can I make? Brenda and I went to a church in Tulsa a couple of years ago. It's called God Shining Light. We gave a Gideon report. At the end of the report, they took up an offering and there was a whole line of people lined up to talk to Brenda and I. And they all wanted to tell us how their life had changed because of one Gideon scripture. And they had given their life to Christ because of the Gideon Bible. And I'll never forget the young lady that came up to Brenda and said, I just want to say thank you and I want to share with you. My husband and I, we used to go to the hotel and we would get high on the weekends. That was our entertainment. But one weekend we went and we checked into a hotel and praise the Lord, there was a Gideon Bible on the nightstand there. And that weekend we didn't get high, we got saved. We want to say thank you on behalf of this young couple. I want to say thank you. What difference can I make? Watch this video as we listen to Craig Groeschel, please. Hi, my name is Craig Groeschel. I'm the pastor of LifeChurch.tv. And so much of what I'm doing today is the result of how God used the Gideons to get God's Word into my hand to transform my life. When I was in college, my fraternity got in a lot of trouble. I was the ringleader in many ways of the trouble. And so as a PR move, even as a non-Christian, I decided to start a Bible study. The only problem was I didn't own a Bible. And the day that we were scheduled to have our Bible study, I was walking from one class to another when a gentleman, a Gideon, offered me a free green New Testament Bible. I can remember distinctly thinking, wow, if there is a God, he must have just worked through that guy. And sure enough, through the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, I read that you're saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God so no one can boast. And that's when spiritually I was born anew, forgiven of all my sins by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. To all those who serve in the Gideons, thank you for investing in me. For all those who are investing in the Gideons, thank you for making a difference in thousands and thousands of stories just like mine. The living word is active, powerful. Thank you for getting it out. I would say that little green New Testament given to Craig Rochelle, the little New Testament like was given to Brad, made a difference. You see, Craig went on 
to become a pastor. He now pastors what is commonly thought to be the largest church in the world, Life Church. Life Church has 25 locations in seven states as well as online, with thousands upon thousands of people attending that church. But you see, there's even more to that story also. Craig went on to develop an app for your smartphones and for your uh, tablets. Most of you have it on your phone. It's called the Uversion Bible app. And when he developed that app, some of the people around him said, wouldn't it be great if you just charged 99 cents or a dollar for each download of that app? And Craig said, how could I ever charge for the Word of God when it was so freely given to me? I looked this morning, and as of this morning, there were almost 235 million downloads of the Bible uh, throughout the world in 1,364 versions in 1,007 languages. Because of the faithfulness of somebody providing the resources to give one little green New Testament to a young college student walking across the campus. What difference can I make? Congregation, I would say that the Bible that found its way into Christopher's Ewan's, Ewan's hand made a difference. The Bible placed in the jail cell in Honduras made a difference. The little New Testament that I gave to Darren Ford made a difference. The New Testament given to Commander K.D. Hagen made a difference. The Hotel Bible in the British Isles made a difference. And the Bible placed in the hotel room where the young couple went to get high made a difference. The Bible given to Craig Rochelle on that college campus made a difference and continues to make a difference to this day. And each one of us has the opportunity this morning to make a difference in the kingdom of God as we send God, God's word to the ends of the earth. I would ask that you consider giving to the kingdom of God through the Gideons International and give the gift that keeps on giving. There is a saying that says, if you want to make a, life, a difference for a year, plant wheat. If you want to make a difference for a lifetime, plant people. But if you want to make a difference for all of eternity, plant the Word of God. Congregation, are you ready to make a difference this morning? my job and ended up on the streets. I found it a suitable place for me to hang myself. We found our son had taken his own life on our property. Just as the distribution was ended, someone placed a testament in my outstretched hand. That one testament had a great impact on our lives and our family. This is an opportunity for me to have a New Testament. As I began to read the book of Revelations, I could see how much God loved me. It was like for the first time in my life that, that I really felt acceptance. I'm fixing up this drug, and I see the Gideon's Bible over there. But there was, there was a force compelling me to pick this up. You know, he says he'd take away all the weights and burdens that you have. They were gone. 
that has given me hope for daily living in the worst circumstances of my life. Then I knew that there was someone who loved me. All I said was, yes, Lord. And, and it was like a, I was born again right there. powerful and it's life changing each and every day we have an opportunity to get into our word and to read it and to allow God to speak to us it's his breath it's, it is the heart of God speaking to you and speaking to me each and every single day of our lives God's word is powerful. God's word is life changing. I want to encourage you guys. We've just come out of this series, Worship Junkies. And we've been talking a lot about getting in God's presence and, and, and diving deeper into that, that deeper dimension of his of his presence in our lives. And I want to tell you that God's word is an intricate part of getting into His presence and learning, not just about God, but, but learning really how to have a real and life-changing relationship with God. I want to challenge you really with two challenges today. Number one, that you would dig deeper into God's Word in your life. I want to tell you, Misty and I have many habits that have changed our life. and You really are a result of your habits. You're only as great as the habits you have. And reading God's Word each and every single day of your life is one habit that you cannot afford to do without. You've got to get into God's Word. Why? Because God wants to change you from the inside out. But more than that, He wants to use you to change the world around you. Right? I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. I want God's Word to be shining so bright in my life that people, they can't deny the fact that God is real because of the love that I have for them. Because His presence that surrounds me each and every day. I want that for you. And secondly, I want us to pray today. And then in just a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, we're going to, we're going to give you an opportunity to accept that free gift of grace and we're going to pray with you right where you are. But I want to tell you, God wants to change your life through His Word. Take this week and just start. Just, you know, we have our 15-minute challenge. That five-minute challenge of five minutes in God's presence and in a time of worship, right? And five minutes in prayer, right? And five minutes in the reading of His Word. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. Do it. It starts today. Do it. Your life will never be the same again. And then I want to pray. I want to pray that as this church has continually given to Gideon's International, and as I believe many of you who are now newly familiar to Gideon's International, you're going to begin to give. And I just want to pray over every single penny that goes forth that we would continue to see Scripture after Scripture after Scripture after Scripture after Scripture in hotels and college campuses and handed to orphan children, schools, to millions and millions of people around the world. God's Word does not return void to Him. Would you stand up with me this morning? How many of you would be honest with the Lord and with yourself and just say, you know what? I need more of God's Word in my life. Can you raise your hand this morning? Amen. Me too. I need more, uh, more and more of God's Word in my life. So we're going to pray here, and as we do, I'm going to pray over you. 
that God would give you just this un unquenchable thirst and a hunger for His Word like never before. And then I want to pray for Gideon International. Will you bow your heads with me? Father God, we bring ourselves before You, Father God, humbly, in truth, and in spirit, in transparency, God, we God, we ask that you would just begin to move in our lives mightily, God, through your word. Give us a deeper passion and understanding, God. Make us hungry. And as we sit down and begin to read your word even more, Father God, hungry for it, that you would speak to your people. That you would speak, God, to each and every one, every one of us individually, God. What it is that you would have for our lives. What it is you would have for us to do. So that as we look out and as we do life, God, that you would show us how we can impact others. How we can love people. How we can be an extension of your hands to those who are hurting and hopeless around us. And Father, right now we pray over this ministry, God. We pray for the Gideons International, God. God, we pray that more and more resources would come from the obedience, God, of those people who are so faithfully giving to this ministry, God. We pray, Lord, that as the scriptures go out, God, that hearts would continually be changed, that lives would be one for your kingdom, God, that people would give up and give in and let go and let you be God in their lives. So grateful, Lord, for your presence. So grateful, God, for the things that have been done through this ministry. For the things that you're doing right now in this ministry. And the things that you are about to do, God. And we are grateful that Mountain Movers Church gets to be a little part of that contribution, God. To change lives for eternity. With your head still bowed and your eyes closed, I just want to ask you this morning. Do you have that real relationship with Jesus. We've talked about it. You've heard video testimony of other people who have come to understand that that is why we exist in this life. This life is but a vapor. The Bible says it's here and then it's gone in one day. We're each one going to stand before God and He's either going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, you have served me well. You've had that relationship. I know you. I call you by name. Or He's going to say, depart from me, you doer of iniquity. I never knew you. Guys, it's not enough to just believe God exists, but you have to have a real, life-changing relationship with Him that's living every single day. This morning, I want to give you that opportunity. If you're here and you say, I don't have what you're talking about. I know God's out there, but I don't talk to Him every day. I don't read His Word. I, I don't hear Him talk directly to me like you're talking about, but I want to. We're not going to call you out. We're not going to embarrass you. We just want to pray with you right where you are. If that's you, I'm going to count to three. And I just want you to raise your hand right where you are. And we're going to pray with you as a body of believers. Is that you? Your life can change right now. One, two, three. Amen. I see your hands. Amen. I see your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. The best decision. I ever made in my life was saying yes to Jesus. And every day I get up and I say yes, yes to Jesus again. Thank you, Jesus. This morning we pray together, church, as we lead these into a real relationship with you. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe. I believe. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. That Jesus Christ gave his life for me. That Jesus Christ gave his life for me. I ask this morning. I ask this morning. That Jesus would come into my heart. Jesus, you would come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. And give me a brand new start. Give me a brand new start. I want a real. I want a real. And a life changing. And life changing. Relationship with relationship you. Relationship with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you give Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 
660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.